Dear students, today's topic is Lorentz transformation for space and time coordinates. This is topic EMREL-4. Now let us consider two Cartesian coordinate system RF1 and RF2 with observers O1 and O2 at the origins. Now let RF2 is moving with a uniform velocity V the event taking place in RF2 with the speed of light c here in uh, the second frame. Now the transformation equation for the RF1 and RF2 are the x1, y1, z1, t1, x2, y2, z2, t2. That is the figure 1 of the reference frame 1 and different frame 2, origin 1 and origin 2. So now that x1 is equal to gamma times x2 plus v t2 the equation number 1 and x2 is equal to gamma x1 minus v t1 is equation number 2. Now where gamma is called a relativistic factor since the speed of light is independent of the source hence gamma is same for both uh, reference uh, frames rf1 and rf2. Uh, if you see this is the Galilean transformation equation but uh, in the Lorentz considered that the Galilean of uh, the classical the laws do not uh, hold in the relativistic uh, reference frames. So he introduced that factor gamma. We would like to see now the, what is the value of that factor upon which uh, parameter it depends. So the gamma is a relativistic factor and it is considered to be the same in both because the speed of light is the same. So the gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2 is equal to gamma. Now let x1 is the distance traveled uh, uh, observed by the uh, this uh, observer 1 is given by c t1 time taken by the that speed with the moving with the, that event taking place with the velocity c. Similarly, x2 will observe the event as a c t2 time amount of time taken uh, by that uh, uh, event. So, putting these two equations, uh, three that is the in equation one, uh, we we have the here we have the equation one and two. Putting equation one and in two, the rele relevant the respective values, c t1 is equal to gamma c t2 minus t2 pulling putting the value of here the x1 here the x2 so minus v t2 and c t2 is equal to gamma c t1 minus v t1 which is equation number 7 6 and 7 there are two equations now from, from equation 6 we have here t2 is equal to if you rearrange and just take t2 common so what we get 1 over gamma uh, into t1 over 1 plus v by c uh, whole bracket equation number 8. Now putting the value of t2 in equation number 7 here this t2 value this whole value we place in now equation number 7 what we get the rearranging and multiplying we, we get the value of the gamma. So gamma uh, uh, now is found it is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus v by c square v by c whole square is the now the ratio of the two velocities that is the the velocity of the that uh, frame moving with the that whatever the velocity is moving and c is the speed of light so gamma now defines that factor so if we have the uh, gamma uh, will be equal to 1 if v is very small as compared to the c we then what we say that gamma value is equal to 1 because it will be then classically uh, the because in classical physics what we consider the motion of the all the reference frames are very very small extremely small as compared to the speed of light so over there we don't need any relativistic factors to be uh, included but uh, in case the v is very very uh, large as it is the some 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or 0 0.5 times c or 0.9 c, then uh, that is the gamma has to be taken into account. Now, to find the time t2, uh, 
time let us now recall the equation 1 and 2 x1 was equal to this x2 is equal to uh, this expression now putting the value of x2 from equation 2 in equation 1 so taking this x, x2 is place in equation number 1 and rearranging it x1 is equal to this uh, gamma gamma x1 minus v t1 plus v t2 simplifying rearranging simplifying for the t2 what we find t2 is equal to x1 over gamma v 1 minus gamma square plus gamma t1 so let's call this equation number 10 since the 1 minus gamma square is equal to uh, the if you consider is gamma square into uh, 1 minus v by c whole square so here we have this 1 minus gamma square is gamma square into minus v by c whole square here this term has been written that if you gamma square is equal to 1 over 1 minus v by c whole square then 1 minus gamma square is 1 minus 1 over 1 minus v by c whole square and taking that multiplying with that and subtracting that we get minus 1 1 is cancelled out so 1 into 1 is 1 minus uh, 1 minus v by c whole square so we are left on in the denominator and uh, in the numerator minus v by c whole square 1 minus v by c whole square this is what is gamma square so gamma square times minus v by c square so putting that value uh, in equation 10 what we get t2 is equal to x1 over gamma v uh, uh, v and minus gamma square v, v square by c square plus gamma t1 and rearranging and simplifying what we get t2 is equal to t1 minus x1 v by c square or divided by 1 minus v by c whole square so hence we have now the Lorentz transformation of space and time coordinates as given as follows in reference frame 1 we have got x1 is equal to gamma x2 this is for the space uh, uh, the transformation uh, position or distance uh, coordinate x1 uh, if the some event is taking place along the x only and no changes uh, along y1 and z1 then x1 is equal to gamma x2 plus v t2 while the y1 is equal to y2 z1 is equal to z2 and t1 is equal to t2 plus x2 v by c square divided by 1 minus v by c whole square square root and for the reference frame 2 x2 is equal to gamma times the x1 minus vt1 whole bracket close y2 is equal to y1 z2 is equal to z1 t2 is equal to t1 minus x1 v by c square whole divided whole divided by the square root of 1 minus v by c whole square so that's how we have the now the Lorentz transformation equations now we are ready to now transform the the uh, other coordinate systems uh, the, within the coordinate system the other uh, parameters as well so these are the Lorentz transformation for the space and time with this we reached the end of the topic thank you